Hello guys, welcome to a new episode of Unity Easy Backend. Today we're going to learn how to download images for our items from our server. So the steps that we're going to take in order to do this are quite simple. First of all, we need the images that we are going to download. So you can make your own or we can download them. Then we're going to manually upload these images into our server. Then we're going to make a PHP file to get these images from the server. And finally, we're going to make a Unity script to get these images from the PHP file, convert it into a texture and a sprite, and then use it and apply it on our UI. And that's basically what we're going to do today. So let's dive into it. All right, so first of all, you can make your own item icons. Uh, but for this case, for this tutorial, I actually found an awesome pixel art icon pack uh, by Kynos. And um, this is for free, it's in the Unity Asset Store and it looks gorgeous. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for those of you who want to download it. All right, so now we have our images and we need to place these images in our server in XM. Right now we're using XM, right? So I was doing some testing here, let me delete this. It can depend on where you install it. For me, I installed XM in my drive D, htdocs, and then go to your project folder name. In my case, it's Unity Backend Tutorial. Here we have all our PHP files. We have our connection settings and everything else. And we're going to create a folder or directory. And I'm going to call it items. You can call it item images or whatever. I'm going to call it items icons. And here we're going to put all the images that we downloaded. So if we go back to Unity, you can see here pixel art, icon pack, RPG. You can right click showing Explorer. And uh, we see here the, the texture folder. So there's a lot of them. I'm going to just copy a few because we don't need all of them. I like the wooden sword, the wooden shield, and maybe the pickaxe. So we have these three items. What else? Let's see if we add something more just to make this a little bit more fun. So we have potions. So potions. I like this one. So red potion. Red potion. Paste it here. Now I'm going to go with the wood log. So we have this in our XM folder in the htdocs folder. So that means that we should be able to see them from our local host. So go to your browser. I just type localhost slash Unity backend tutorial and you have a index of all the things inside and you see the directory here items icons and inside we indeed have pickaxe and everything else and we can actually see it from here right so we know it's working oh by the way remember that you have to turn on xamp apache and mysql for the all these that we're doing to work all right we have that great now we have to make a php file to fetch these things for us. But before we do that, there is one thing that I have to talk about. And that is that we have two ways of getting this, getting these, uh, basically these images. So here's the database. And as you can remember, we have an ID for each item. And this ID is unique, all right? We have an ID for sword, potion, for the wood. And there is two ways that we could get the image. As you see here, we have an image uh, column where we could actually type the path, the URL for getting the image, which is here. So we would type uh, something like items, icons, slash pickaxe.png as a string in the image field for each item. So each item would have a URL for an image. But there is another way, and I think we're going to do the second method uh, in this video, which is just name your images in your server as the ID of each of your items. There is pros and cons. For me, I think it's pretty much the same. But one thing that I've thought of is that if you use just the ID to name all, all your pictures, then you cannot have uh, two items pointing at the same picture. And if you would like to have two items with the same picture, then you would have to duplicate your images in your server. So it really depends on what you want to do. At the end, it's going to be pretty much the same uh, because we could just get the image as a path or we can use the ID uh, to place it within a 
constant path. But today we're just gonna focus on the method using the ID. So let's rename the items in our server to match the IDs on our database. So let's go here to items icons. So sword is ID number one. So I'm going to rename these to one. Potion is two and uh, oak wood is three. All right, so we have those three items matched with the items on our database. Awesome. Now let's create the PHP file so that we can get these images with the ID submitted by the user. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. We're going to create a new script. I'm going to save it as um, get item icon. And uh, this is .php, so php down here. So get item icon. And we are going to do pretty much the same we do with all the things. And actually I realized this should be down here after we check the connection. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, we copy the PHP tags and the connection settings and everything. Even we can even copy these as well. So get icon the PHP required connection settings. All right, check the connection and uh, kill it if it's failed. And then variables submitted by the user. So yes, indeed we want to have the item ID. So we're going to be using it to create the URL to get our item icon. All right, what else? Um, so for this case, we're not going to be using the SQL, but if you were to use the second method I'm talking about, you would have to run a SQL that is uh, select, no. So you would have to select uh, something like this, image, we could call it image URL or something like that, from items where item ID is equals to the item ID submitted by the user, something like that. Uh, and that would be pretty simple. And then you would use this value to get the URL and just get that image from there. But for us, we're going to construct our own path. So let me delete this. I'm going to uh, create a new variable. I'm going to call it path. And this path for now is basically this, this directory here. And actually, if we refresh this, you will see that it's now it's called one, two, and three. So this directory here, just gonna copy their HTTP, localhost, Unity backend tutorial, items, icons, and then we're going to concatenate um, the item ID. So item ID, and that is concatenated with .png. There we go. So we have the path to our images based on each item ID. Now we have to get the contents of that path. So we're going to create a variable. I'm going to call it uh, image. And this is equals to file underscore get underscore contents. And we're just going to give it our path parameter. All right. And finally, we just need to do echo image. And that should uh, give us the image for our browser or in our case unity to to download. Now, we need to close the connection. So just like we used to do in our other scripts, um, copy the end of it and just paste it there connection close and then we close our brackets. And this is actually a pretty simple PHP script. So let's go back to unity. And we're going to go to web, our web script that we have here. And uh, I already created the method, uh, which we can do it again, but I, I think for the sake of time, I will just go through it. So basically we have a get item icon enumerator, like our other functions. And we're going to pass a string item ID. And we're also going to pass a action, which is going to be used to grab the sprite at the end and apply the sprite using that action into our UI. All right. And remember, this is an action with a sprite parameter. So we add the sprite there. All right. So it's very simple. But one thing I noticed is that uh, unity uh, web request dot send was obsolete 
So I just had to change it to send web request. So if you see other of our previous examples, uh, wait, uh, we used here. We use www.send and Unity told me that it's obsolete and we should use send web request instead. And that's what I did. So I just changed that. Uh, so keep that in mind. So send web request, uh, then the same, see if there is any error. Uh, and then if there was no errors, uh, we're going to save the data of the download handler of our web request as a array of bytes, all right? And I just call it bytes. Now we need to create a texture from these bytes. And for that, Texture2D has a function called load image. So basically we create a new texture and it's just a new object we call texture and it's two times two, but don't worry because that size will be uh, overridden by this. So we created the texture and then we use the function texture.loadImage bytes. And remember, those bytes are the data that came from the Unity web request. Now we have the texture 2D, but to use it on a UI, we have to make a sprite from it, all right? So sprite, we make a sprite object, a sprite is equals to sprite.create, all right? Uh, no constructor this time, we're using a static function from the sprite class. And we pass in the texture as the first parameter. Then second, we have a rectangle. So the rectangle is basically a rectangle that goes from 0, 0 to the texture width and the texture height. And then finally, we need a vector 2, which is the pivot of the sprite. And uh, it is a percentage and it's not absolute values. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 basically means the middle of the image, right? So it's like 50%, 50%. Awesome. So finally, we call the callback that we passed as a parameter and we give it the sprite we just created. All right, awesome. Now we just need to create a callback and this is easy because we just want to make an action that takes in a sprite as a parameter and applies it on our UI. All right, so let's go to item manager, which is where we create our items. So here, create items, create items. Um, we have the item ID here. Great, we can use the item ID. Um, actually, here we already created callback to get the information from web.cs. So this is actually blocking because we're changing this Boolean, telling us whether or not we are done downloading. Uh, and I think we, yeah, we wait for it here, as you can see. So we wait for that. Uh, this time we don't want to make this blocking though, uh, because if we have a lot of items and uh, I don't want to have to wait for all the items to load uh, their images before we can move. So what I'm going to do is just copy this, but I'm going to paste it after this, right here actually in field information. So let's do a little tricky thing here. We're going to create a callback again, but this time to get the sprite from web.cs. And this time we don't need this is done equals true because we're not going to use this for waiting anymore. Uh, we're just going to do it whenever it's done downloading. Um, also, we need to change the name of this. So get item icon callback. And this has to be a sprite because our parameter that we're going to be using is going to be a sprite. I'm going to call it um, something like downloaded icon. I think it's better if we call it sprite. Sprite, and we're gonna use it here. All right, just like here, we want to get the uh, component from our game object, which is each item. But instead of getting the description this time, we want to get the icon. I'm not sure if it was called icon, so let's go to Unity and find out. Uh, wait a second, there is an error. Uh, yeah, just ignore this. All right, uh, where is our prefab? Prefab, item, and uh, all right, so it's called image. And the image has the sprite right there. So item go, the transform, define, image dot get component image uh, we need to get the sprite and set it equal to downloaded sprite 
and I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's try it. Just try it, all right? Um, this is just the callback. We haven't called the call routine yet. So after we create this callback, we're going to do start call routine, and we're going to get it from web. So that is main.instance.web dot um, get item icon. All right, and this coroutine has two parameters. The first one is item ID, and the second one is the callback we just created. So get item icon callback. And there we go. So basically, when we're creating each item, we should create the item, but at the same time, we're going to start a core routine that is going to download, begin the download process for the icon. And then the icon is going to be passed back into this action that we created. And that action is going to say, all right, I got this downloaded sprite. I'm going to grab item go uh, and find the image and change its component, the sprite, um, and set it equals to the downloaded sprite. And pretty much, I think that's all we have to do. So let's try it. There might be errors, I know, but let's just try this. Uh, and if it works on the first try, this should be awesome. All right, guys, so test user and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, log in. <laughs> awesome, it worked. All right, <laughs> I'm super happy. Let's give us a few more items in our database so we can try with more items. So here, uh, we have three items in total. So let's go to user items and uh, we need to add a few relationships. So the user ID is going to be, let me remember, our user ID is one, all right. So we're going to insert two items for us um, user ID one, item ID two, and uh, user ID one, item ID one. I think those are, uh, let's do go, and uh, we inserted two rows. Now let's go back to Unity, log in again, and see if we have the images of each item. So uh, test user, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, log in. And there we go. This is awesome. So we have the the wood, the potion, the sword, all downloaded from our server. Basically, the item icons that we placed here. And by using the IDs, we get the name. We created the path to it uh, by using the item ID, as you see here, guys. Uh, we got it. We converted the image uh, to get the contents. We echoed it so that Unity could get it and... Uh, we also did something awesome, which is creating the texture 2D from those bytes, because we just got a bunch of bytes here. And then from those bytes, we created a sprite. I mean, from that texture, we created a sprite that we passed on a callback that went to our item manager that we used to set the image of each of our items. This is super cool. I'm super excited with all this, but guys, that's basically what we have to do to easily get the icons of our items into our game. So again, thank you so much for watching these videos, guys. I'm having uh, so much fun making these. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I hope you found this video useful. And on the next video, we're going to be downloading the images, saving them in our device. And then the next time we open the game, we're going to check if these images already were downloaded so basically we're going to check if they are here and uh, then we're going to decide whether or not we download them only based in if we have it or not therefore we can save uh, for example if you're doing this game for phones we can save the user some uh, data from their internet plan so but that's going to be on the next video guys for now thank you so much for watching please remember to like this video uh, share it with your friends, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all on the next video. Take good care. Goodbye.